Why should you learn Vim in 2019? I hope that I can help you figure it out. So React Holiday went super well. I really enjoyed myself and my favorite part was the videos. So I thought that I would go ahead and I would make more videos on another topic of programming, something that is near and dear to my heart, which is gaining editor efficiency. Now, every time I talk about Vim or someone asks me about Vim, they ask like, why should I spend time learning a 20 plus year old editor? And that is a great question. We've had huge advancements in editors over the course of the last decade, and they're way better editors right now. So why would you spend time learning Vim? And to answer that, I'll just have to tell you my story. 10 years ago when I started um, programming for the web or doing HTML, it might even be longer, I don't know. You, you kind of start to lose track after a decade. But I was using an editor called TextMate and it was a Mac only editor and it had all of these really cool shortcuts and key bindings, but they were very specific to TextMate. And when I got my first actual salary development position, uh, they were all using Windows machines and I had to switch. I couldn't even bring my own laptop into the place. So what was I supposed to do? Well, I decided that I didn't want to have that situation happen to me again, where I was really efficient in one editor that I couldn't use in a certain environment or for a certain job, or even just in, in different development environments. If I needed to fix something on a server and I didn't have access to a GUI, I wanted to kind of transcend uh, a single editor and uh, be effective in editing text anywhere. Today, I don't actually use Vim, the terminal editor. I use VS Code, and I've used lots of editors since. I've used Atom, Sublime Text, Code Sandbox, Code Pen, JS Bin, RubyMine, what's the other one? WebStorm. There are just so many editors that have a decent Vim emulation um, that you can actually take your skills in editing from one place to another. And I've been able to switch all the time. I did a stint in Emacs, I was using Vim, I was using Mac Vim. Uh, in browser editors, I can go anywhere and be pretty efficient at editing text. And that's why I think that it is important to learn Vim in 2019 because it is a very transportable um, set of macros supported on a lot of different platforms and uh, IDEs and editors and whatever. So that's why I think that you should learn it. Now, where does this come into play? Over the next 30 days, I'm going to cover just very basic Vim knowledge. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the alphabet as a way to learn. I learned a lot of Vim from a programmer named Ben Orenstein, and he said that you should be able to look down at your keyboard, look at all the keys and say, do I know what every one of these does in the command slash normal mode? And I thought that it was really interesting to go from A and go all the way down to Z and then handle a few of the special characters. And that fits really neatly inside of a month. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna start with A, well, no, first I'm gonna start with quit because there's so many times that you find yourself in Vim and uh, you don't know how to get out. So that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna start with quit and uh, then we're gonna go A to Z and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Check the description for the playlist if you are coming to this not in January 2019. Uh, you should be able to see all the videos, I'll link those up, and um, maybe any additional information or resources that I think will be helpful to you in your Vim journey. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, continue on to figure out how to quit Vim.